quick little note before the episode starts. This episode was actually another fan request. Uh, Nicole, who requested Camelot the year before, wanted to have us do Mama Me Here We Go Again for her birthday. And it was very, I would say serendipitous, just like the serendipity exhibited in this um, cinematic masterpiece known as Mama Me Here We Go Again. Um that things you know work out the way they do and it just so happened that we were gonna do this movie and it was also a movie that nicole requested for her birthday in may so here you go nicole and to all the listeners finally you've been waiting for a year to hear about what we all thought about mama me here we go again after teasing you for so long so here you go enjoy the show I've been cheated by you. No, this one. Oh, I didn't see that. Sorry. I was doing my dramatic, you know, how the song Mamma Mia came to be, Mm -hmm. just like it was in the movie. Okay. But as Cher. Okay. Is it, do you hear the blue? No. Yeah. Do you hear the? See? Can't even. It's classic ABBA. Where you don't actually know the words, but it's, cl- it's mm. classic. You automatically just people it. writing English yeah. lyrics. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear the drums for I know? I remember long ago another summer night like this. In the firelight for Nando. You were humming to yourself and softly strumming your guitar. I could hear the distant drums and sounds of bugle calls were coming from afar. Great. There was something in the air. That night, the stars were bright, fun and no. Great. I mean, I think Chad Michaels' job is safe, but I appreciate yeah. the contribution. <laughs> they keep booking me on these chicken shit gigs. <laughs> <laughs> um, RJ, how are you this week? <laughs> wow, that's a loaded question, apparently. I, know. I didn't think it was. You're... I just was, I feel like I usually go with Molly, and today <laughs> I decided to switch it up. And... Your tone sounds so pointed, right? I don't know why you would insinuate that, RJ. Well, you know what? Let's say this we're recording this at the end of April. This episode will come out mid May. Mm-hmm. No, mid May. Because Mame is end of April. So mm-hmm. this is mid May. Okay. Mame. Mame. <laughs> uh, I'm very excited to see who rj is and what rj is by the doing time this by the time out. this episode comes out what does that mean just you know my company just being like you know some personnel changes are coming uh, personal changes are coming you never know what's gonna happen next and uh keep that resume up to date girlies yeah. so the portfolio yeah, lots gotta... of restructuring happening my yeah. brother i won't say just for privacy where he worked but he worked for like a big company and literally got hired there out of college Mm. And he's seven years older than me. You could so, say it's the Trump organization. You can yeah, say that. so he did. He did work for the Trump organization. No. Um, <laughs> but so he's probably worked there for like almost 20 years at this point mm-hmm. because it's, you know, maybe 15. But, you know, like he's worked for a long, long, a long time. time. Yeah. And then like for various reasons, wasn't super happy. So he switched. He he went and got a job somewhere else. And then we were chatting about it. Then my sister-in-law, who works for the same company, they met there. <laughs> oh, um, yes, I Was saying that they're going to do some restructuring there, too. So they like made a joke mm. of like maybe soon neither of them will work for this company even though they both worked there their entire so, adult yeah. lives yeah so wow. the economy ever let's make the this economy. an economics podcast actually oh, well i have hear. some economic tea later on to oh bring God, you yes. uh, this fact. this movie i mean this movie the story the, the story of this movie yeah are you say. gonna weigh in on the real estate um investment of this this inn on a greek, greek island oh yeah adam are knowledge? you gonna bring in your expertise no in I'm, real estate? I'm gonna weigh in on the fact that they had to shoot in croatia because greece's economy was so bad by the time they shot this movie <laughs> <laughs> well geopolitical i mean we're we're covering all the bases wow. All, all things considered, you You're, could say. Yeah, truly. <laughs> that that would be a great name for a podcast. Somebody should definitely yeah, do that. Yeah. Amazing. Mm. Uh, how about you, Molly? How's, 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 how's I'm it? I'm good. good. I, I um, found an apartment in San Diego. So Yay. I'm going to be moving there on May 14th. So it'll just be when this releases. You can be I'll listening be to this in. episode. I yes. might be listening to this in my new apartment. Studio One um, Bed. Uh, one Bed. Great. 
just because I wanted a place that was really close to work. And so that was, that was the, that was what was available. So I'm going to walk to work every day, which is going to be oh amazing. Oh my God, you truly, yes. It's the dream. It's the California you're gonna, dream. You're not going to roller skate to work? Oh my God, maybe I should get some roller skates. <laughs> Listeners, write in with what roller skates you think I should buy to go to work every day. I mean, the oh. kids that I work with would die. They would love it, they I'm would, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, and this is Mother's Day episode, right? Happy Mother's Day Happy to Mother's all the mothers Day. out there. With all my heart, God bless you. Absolutely. I've heard Adam, that, so. are you going to release the episodes oh, that the we recorded of our mother? The mama sods. I the should. Mama-sodes? Thank you for you reminding should. me. Mini mama sods, or maybe there'll be like some little Sprinkle snippets before this app or something. I don't know, but I'm sure Rita would be. You thrilled. could you could seamlessly interweave it within this episode, like what mama yeah. me? Here we go. We'll again, say dude. something and then it'll just be like it'll make it sound like they're in the room with us. Yes. Yeah, I'm not gonna do that, <laughs> okay. but great. It's an idea. I would like you to spend the next month of your life making yes. that into an audio masterpiece, please. <laughs> that would require me starting to edit it more Period. than more than three hours before yeah. the day it's due. <laughs> and we all went to college together. We'll tell you this. That's not happening. It's um, very, honestly, at this point in my life, it's impressive that I still complete it by the time it's due. RJ. Yes. This week, you mm-hmm. have the challenge. Of summarizing oh, the plot of Mamma yeah. Mia, colon, here we go again. I feel like you can do this, RJ. In a minute or less. Okay. And I, I will be shocked if you're not able to do it. But th- there's no pressure. I believe in you. There's you truly wrote no it pressure. out. This is a simple, a simple, simple story at its core. There's a lot. There's a lot. There's a, there's lot, a lot, lot of complexity there, Molly. There's a lot. Don't <laughs> count it out. So much nuance. So <laughs> okay. And your time starts now. Five years after the non-wedding of Sophie and Skye, Sophie reopens the hotel after her mother Donna's death and rebrands it the Casa Bella Donna in her honor. She feels alone in her endeavor without Donna. As Skye is away in New York with a potential new job and her dads Bill and Harry are away with their careers. Her aunts Rosie and Tanya and her biological father Sam all do their best to reassure Sophie she's good enough to do this, but Sophie is weighed down by her mom's legacy of doing this all on her own, which we see a younger Donna in flashbacks that show the events that led to Donna starting the hotel in Calicari and her eventual conception of Sophie. Despite a massive storm ruining the grand reopening plans, Harry, Bill, Skye, and the local fishermen come as surrogate guests to fill the party and lift Sophie's spirits, which eventually leads to the surprise arrival of her grandmother, Ruby, attempting to rekindle a relationship with her family and ends up rekindling a lost love along the way. Sophie discovers she's pregnant and feels emotionally connected to her mother who found her purpose in Kalakari while she gave birth to her. And Sophie feels fulfilled with the life and community she has. Right on the minute. Wow. Amazing. <gasps> I... I did the thing where I slowed down in the beginning and then it was like, oh, I felt the urgency. Yes. yes. But this was, this was very succinct. Well done. But I do want to raise a point of order. Yes, Mm -hmm. please. Is Sam Sophie's biological father? I thought the whole point was that we don't know. Oh, that's the whole point is that we don't know. The whole point is that we don't know. He is, he's on the Island because he married Donna or like, yes, they partner later in life or whatever. So like, he's there as like, he's like her stepfather in the sense of like, having the fun- been in a relationship with her mother like, recently yes. yeah but he's i think that that's the whole joke because at the end they say something about like oh like i have really nice ears well he kind of has these blue eyes like mm-hmm. talking yeah. about the grandson as if to say like we all still joke about who's who's we, we really we really don't him. know who it is i think i yeah. was just misremembering the because he's the one that she gets back with mm-hmm. yeah that i kind of mistook that as i think there was a um like a nod or something that is like it's he's the he's the one but i thought that isn't there even maybe a nod that it's actually harry i thought maybe there was something in the first movie well i mean we can analyze this movie because we see the actual time frame that's true so we can everyone really get out your get out your... phase calendars <laughs> um, try, I to just, try to calculate i would like a point of order yeah. it is yeah. pronounced calicary calicary Ah, and, thank you. And also, I would like another point of order. Um, you did not say this, so this is not about what you said. But Sophie so and so Sky are not married. They're not married. Yeah, that's right. I didn't say that's it's why. Not, I said yeah, you said after the non-wedding. Yeah, I just want to yeah. remind the listeners that they did not, and, and at no point they have gotten married since the time yeah. we saw them. A quick corrections corner. Also, while we're talking about pronunciation, that Rita told me that it's terpsichore. I think Terp, terpsichore. Oh. Terpsichore. That's the muse. Uh, from Xanadu. Mm-hmm. So apologies to all of our so apo- Greek heads. Ancient Greeks. Or apologies yeah. to the Greeks once again. It's a Greek heavy year. Yeah. We just we love it. We love Greece. Yeah. Not the not Greece. Not, not the word with the C, not an S. Sorry. Yes. 
Okay, well, I'm going to start because I am the I am the godforsaken reason that we watched this film today. Mm-hmm. So Your I'm going to talk about my relationship to this movie. Now, 2018, this movie comes out. I will not get into the specifics of the movie quite yet, but 2018, this movie comes out, and I was like, well, RJ and I have um, AMC+. Plus. What is it called? Is it AMC+. Plus? A- AMC movie A-list. Pass. A-list. Oh, okay. A-list. I thought maybe this A-list. was back in movie pass days. Uh no, yeah. I think I think Movie Pass had just ended. Okay. Um, so we went, we had, you know, you get movies for free. So I was like, well, we'll go see it. And we um, were so close to an AMC. We lived like a block and a half away, practically. Mm. So we went to go see it in a packed theater. Wow. Of middle aged women mm-hmm. and gay men. Mm-hmm. Is this Orlando? This, this is Orlando. Orlando. Okay. This is Orlando. <laughs> Big Orlando culture. Um and it was one of the top five movie going experiences of my entire life. Wow. A raucous crowd. A raucous crowd singing along, but like not over, not super loud, but like just an ev- laughing at every joke that this every movie joke has. Every joke landed. Cr- hearing people cry at the end. <laughs> like, I mean, the Ooh. audience was tens, tens, tens across the board. Yeah. It was amazing. And I walked out of the movie and I said, first of all, this is better than the original. Mm-hmm. And second, it might be one of the greatest movie musicals ever made. And wow. after what I, I will, know, I'll save the, what I thought. And you know, that's the power okay. of communal experience. After a rewatch. Mm. But theater is supposed to be communal. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it helps. I got to say it helps. And it helped that Nicole Kidman really saved theater and brought us all she back She saved to movies. Yeah. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks, Nicole. So that's what I wanted to say about my relationships movie. Uh, yeah, I liked it when I first saw it. It was great. Um, RJ, you will also have a similar I story. had the same story. I'll just add the caveat that we rewatched Mamma Mia before coming in, before watching the movie in theaters. So at that time, it would have been my second time watching Mamma Mia because we had previously watched it just like by ourselves. I was thinking like for showcase, but I was like, no, that was now. That was for this era. Yeah. So yeah, we had just watched it. Um, and then like, you know, same background as before family loves abba so it was nice to see all the b-sides let's say Mm -hmm. get its you know their due gets its due yeah molly um shocking no one i had never watched it before i wrote down i resent that you made me watch this and nothing could be less appropriate to celebrate my mother in particular um you know i so i had avoided it due to Mm -hmm. not liking abba or mama mia or anything about it Mm-hmm. I will I don't want to hear I don't want to hear your initial take. I don't okay. want to hear it yet. Just so don't no say it. Takes. Great. I had not watched it before this. Okay. Great. Great. What had you heard about it besides like us talking about it? Ah, uh, I had what heard What was your that general was... consensus of the pop culture? Not, what I heard from pop culture was better than the first one mm-hmm. and basically like making more fun of itself or like having having more fun with the whole concept, mm-hmm. which I was sort of like got but also was like i feel like the first one wasn't taking itself all that seriously so i don't mm-hmm, i can't imagine sure. it's a huge deviation um mm-hmm. so i heard that and then just that share was in it people just yeah. talk about share being present yeah. yeah i mean we could spend a whole 30 minutes of this episode just on shares five minutes in this movie <laughs> yeah. truly okay so Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again is directed by Ole Parker and written by Ole Parker. Ole Parker uh, is probably most famous in America, at least, for the Best Exotic Marigold Hotel movies. Oh, okay. Written and directed by. Okay. The was there Swede? A, a Swede? That I don't, I think he's British. Was Ole there a, just sounds like a Swedish name, yeah. Was there a reason why um, Felita Lloyd is not the director anymore? From the first they movie? didn't ask her to do it? I don't know. They didn't ask her to do it, but they still wanted to do it. Okay. Um, sure. The okay. The story is by Katherine Johnson, Richard Curtis, and Ole Parker. Uh, it's based on shockingly Mamma Mia. It's produced by Judy Kramer and Gary Getzman. It stars Christine Baranski as Tanya, uh, Pierce Brosnan as uh, Sam, Dominic Cooper is Sky, Colin Firth is Harry, Andy Garcia is uh, Senor Sin Sin Fuego. Sin Fuego. Sin Fuego. Sin Fuego. Uh, First name, Fernando. Lily James plays a young Donna. Amanda Seyfried plays Sophie. Still in Scars, Scars Guard is Bill. Bill. Julie Walters is Rosie. Cher is Ruby. And Meryl Streep is Donna. Cinematography. Stacked. It's a but, huge cast list. 
quickly just i'm going to confirm that old parker it's his full name is oliver parker he is english also was married to tandaway newton for those who are fans of westworld oh yeah okay um they just split up in 2022 they did but yes cinematography is by robert yeoman it is edited by peter lambert the music is by abba Production companies are Playtone, Little Star Productions, Legendary Pictures, and Perfect World Pictures. It is distributed by Universal Studios. Another Universal. Add it to the bracket. Add it to the bracket. <laughs> um, it was released in the United States on July 20th, 2018, exactly 10 years to the week that the first one wow. was released. Uh, its running time is 114 minutes. Its budget was $75 million, and its box office is $402.3 million. Insane. Wow. People so just much. needed it. Now there's <laughs> shockingly not a lot of historical data about this film, I hate to tell you. <laughs> so here's the fun little tidbits that I found. The role of Ruby, which is the grandmother, was written for Cher. Um, and her the guy who asked her because she was originally, I don't know if we were talking about it, but she was offered Rosie. Or no, she was offered Tanya in the original, the original. movie. Okay. Oh, okay. And she turned it down. So yeah, it seems Seems in like a... in the 10 years that had passed her friend who uh in the 10 years had become the head of universal pictures mm. was like you have to do this movie and then allegedly he hung up immediately after telling her she had to do it so she had no time to respond no um i don't think that's how it works i don't say it works but i also love that level of friendship i love that level yeah. of friendship that's very funny also this was her first musical since burlesque this is her first movie since burlesque she had not wow. appeared in a movie since 20 times did you all do Burlesque for the first season? We did. Yes, oh, we did. Too bad that I won't be able to watch it. I'll oh, never, I, I'll never, well, I'll never see it now. But you know, I'll happily redo it. Okay, we, happily. <laughs> we might, you know, it might win the award for best revival next, or for you never know. revival yeah. for, in the showies. You yeah. never know. Um, we should have people vote in the Discord. Sorry, I'm so sorry. <gasps> yes, we should. We should. We should have people vote. Um, she apparently chose what is his name? I'm so sorry, uh, Andy Garcia, to play. Fernando. Fernando. Mm -hmm. She got to select him <laughs> out of Garcia, a lineup of men. Andy Garcia, who was born in 1956, and in this movie, they make a reference to having met each other in 1959. Yes, mm -hmm. correct. He would have been three years old when he fell. <laughs> well, speaking of three years old, Cher is three years older than Meryl Streep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we're doing really well on all um, oh, yeah. fronts of making sense. Yeah. A uh, potential third movie is in development, apparently. Oh. And apparently, Julie Walters is retired, which I didn't know. Yeah. She became a dame during the making of this film, by the way. But oh. um, she said she has said that the only movie that would get her to come out of retirement is if they make a third one. That of is because it's so wild. Which tells me, honestly, more about the making of the film yeah, than the that film quality. The yes. process of making it. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Because I will say, whether or not you think these films are great or bad, you cannot look at the screen and be like, these people are not having the time of their fucking lives. Yes. <laughs> um, a very different vibe from the Les Mis experience, <laughs> oh, I feel like. Oh, yeah, I would say so. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Meryl Streep and, and Lily James are ninth cousins, three <gasps> times removed. Okay, Crazy. white people, we have to talk about this. We Why are we keeping to... these kinds of records? We don't need to know this stuff. Also, you know like, what I mean? What does that even... Literally, what does that mean? Yeah, I mean, that mean, I tried to look up a cousin chart, and all the cousin charts I found don't even extend don't that, go far. that far. So, like, yeah. what is that? That means nothing. Um, it was not filmed like in Greece, like I said. It was filmed in Croatia. Um, each film. Okay, this is a, this is one that I wrote down, and then I was like, I don't know if I believe this because there's no source right on IMDb. They don't have to source mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. Each frame of the film contains at least one element that is Greek blue. So specifically that like blue right. that's on the flag. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I can't think of an example off the top of my head that would disprove it. Yeah. There was a lot so of I blue. I guess we'll have to watch so. it again. <laughs> there, was, there was definitely a scene in which they shot day for night. And I think that whole scene was that color blue. Yeah, they just so overlaid yeah. that it's blue Just a filter, over. yeah. Yeah. And then Bill's twin... At the beginning of the film, Bill yes. has a twin accepting an award on his behalf. Is a reference to his line in the original film, you're not going to tell me you have a twin sister, are you? Meaning like, Who? Bill said that to Sophie. Oh, like in he the was first worried movie. that there yeah. are he had multiple children. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Which now I'm saying, so then maybe he's not the father. That lowers his, I don't know. 
Oh, that's also not. Oh, you're twins. saying no, that's not. <laughs> they don't think twins. That's a... I do think that there is a thing it's with a... more twins have... and families, but I think it's usually you have a higher probability. But that's yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. I usually think it's like oh, you tend to really small flags in a cycle or like that kind of thing. So anyway, what 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 did you like if like if if the women in your family tend to like release multiple eggs within a cycle, like to have oh, fraternal eggs. twins. I, so I, here's, I this did is not how hear the word eggs, works, and I yeah. thought you said the f word, and I was like, huh. <laughs> I thought she said plagues. I heard <clears throat> I, cigarettes. I did. I had, to, I had yes. to take a kid for a walk today because uh, she said the <gasps> effort. Seven years old. Oh, my God. The kids aren't all right. The kids aren't always all right. It was more about I'm bored and what would happen if I said this thing than like oh, that I'm angry. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, well, top five movies the week this movie came out. Let's talk about them. Number five, Incredibles 2. We, oh. Which we saw. Which we saw in theaters. Number with our AMC. With our AMC yeah. A-list. Number four, actually, no, we did not see that with AMC A-List. We saw that at the Cinemark at Universal. Oh, that's right. The, the listeners are dying to know more. They're just, the listeners love it. They're plotting their Wikipedia yes. our, um, mm-hmm. uh, articles. You can us. update the, uh, yeah, you can always update the music, movie musical Wikipedia page with just our banter about what we were doing surrounding the film because we are that <laughs> famous. And this is now absolutely. historical record. People yeah, need to know. Yeah. Number four that week was Ant-Man and the Wasp. Which we did watch with our AMC Which we did list. see with AMCA list. Number three was Hotel Transylvania 3, Summer Vacation. We skipped this one. Number two was mm-hmm. Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again. And number one was The Equalizer 2. The two equalizer. Mm. Wow. Um, that's all I have. So we yeah. can go straight into the movie. Great. Dive right in. I want everyone to know that there is there is one note, and it's not even really like a note. It's like a, a reminder for us to talk about, to, for a talking point for the discussion. But there are no notes for this discussion. <laughs> What research would I possibly have done? I mean, like I did some research on Alba for the first one, but I was yeah, like, I truly true. don't even know where to start to try to do research. There was no Phantasmagoria I mean, you could, uh, you article could, you written could, about Mommy. Here we go again. You could look up the dictionary entry for joy, maybe. That would be a great start. Try to start. learn it. I did also get told by a kid today because they didn't want to follow a rule. And I was like, do you think that I'm making this up? And she goes, I think that you don't know how to have any fun because you're a grown up. And I was like, Read me. That's that was Read good. That me. was a good response. <laughs> Today's See. mini challenge winner. <laughs> wow. Before I talk about this movie, and before <laughs> RJ talks about this movie, okay. I have to hear what Molly's general take on this film is at okay. this moment right now. Because I have been for 24 hours anxious 24 years extreme pins and needles okay. 31 years i have lived my life and this <laughs> yeah. movie's only been out for five of those years and yet still all, all 31 years have led mm-hmm. to this moment mm-hmm. i thought mm-hmm. it was better than the first one mm-hmm. but i also dislike <laughs> both movies so much that even better mm. than the first one doesn't bump it up into <laughs> I, a good, uh, li- an, a I good like experience. It. Yeah. It's not over 50% for me. So I want to, mm. I want to, it's clarify. a certified splat still. It's, it's a still, full it's splat. still, a, it's like a 40% splat, I'm going to say. <laughs> so you, I want to be okay. very clear right okay. now. You think Zombies 3 is better than this film? I would die on that hill. Absolutely. Z O M B I E S 3 is, is a marvel of cinema. And this well, we, is... We might also be having some personnel changes on the podcast. Oh my gosh, <laughs> Economic restructuring is uh, yeah, going to need to be happening. Rest- Look, yeah. I'm glad that they have fun. Amanda Seyfried killing it in every scene. Mm-hmm. Every scene. I, every scene. I felt like, especially because they set you up with this like fake out that like almost no one from the first movie is going to be in this one. I was mm-hmm. like, thank you, Amanda, for showing up and carrying this whole movie on your back and being like, I'll come back. I'm doing it. I'm here 100%. Uh um so i enjoyed that but like i don't like abba i don't want to tell you there's nothing there's no way to solve for that problem for me Mm. you know we have a a beautiful climax in which many people come on these boats to her new hotel and they sing dancing queen which is the song that makes me feel distant from humanity (laughs) because i don't understand why people like it And this friends is called neurodivergence. Oh my gosh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Diagnosing me with things now because I I don't understand I why don't. people like dancing queen. <laughs> <laughs> is um is it? I don't know if we've dug in, but in the last one, and but is it like 
the lyrics? Is it the melody? Is it because oh, I, I do sound I do Adam f- gave you a look that was definitely him being like, Are you about to armchair diagnose Molly right now? Um because I do I, I can listen to ABBA and be like, yeah. there is kind of like a hollowness to the lyrics. It's very uh-huh. surface level. And the melodies aren't intricate. You know, they're very simple melodies. So it doesn't yeah. feel like Yeah, but so are folk songs. But we're not mad that <laughs> folk think, songs exist. I think it's that they're like there's no like bass line almost in disco music. It's all very like up here. Yes. And I love that. I love vapid pop music in general. Yes. But like I want like a uh, 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 in my music. You know what I mean? Cash is coming back, by the way, allegedly. Oh really? I don't know if you've heard. Oh, she might okay. be dropping an album. I love this it. Summer. Love Kesha, love all the early 2000s divas, absolutely. I just, I feel like there's like nothing to like really get down to in disco music. It's so very like, ooh, ooh. Flitty. It's just I don't a, know. A flitty, yeah. Mm. Yeah, because I don't, it's not that I think music has to be substantial in like a um, content way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Nonsense lyrics are fine. I read an article one time, I think about, the guy who was like the producer behind the Backstreet Boys, who I think was also like a Swedish pop turn yes, out yes. person. And this like philosophy of put words together that sound good and not that actually make sense. That's why like, I want it that way. Is like, if you try to break it down, it's like, what is the song about? Mm-hmm. I don't have, I don't have any issue with that. It's like, I think it's the actual, not even the melody of the music, but like the production of like how the music is layered together that just doesn't there's like a missing there's like it feels like there's a missing it feels like there's a missing element yeah Hmm. Yeah. no i get that do you get that yeah because i can listen to you who grew up i know yes i can listen to disco music and abba and be like yeah it feels like there is something not that it's flat but it's yeah there's something underneath that's missing there's like a a base listeners send me if anybody knows of like a hip-hop remix of abba because i wonder if i would like that Mm. Yeah, listen. I want Kendrick with our Lamar content. sampling <laughs> ABBA is what I want. Yeah, is there a yeah? Is there a Jay Z? Is there a Drake ABBA mashup that we're not just just missing? I mean, with AI audio, you can do anything nowadays. Yeah, honestly, mm, that's Let's true. Do it. Say, we'll say all of that into Chat GPT or Music GPT or whatever, and, say, and they'll give you thing. and they'll yeah. give you the disco with that mm-hmm. with that boom boom. <laughs> Um, great. How do you, how do you, will you accept that, Adam? Sure. Accept- that's her, that's her truth. Yeah. Um, you posted it on your, as a truth on Truth Social? On Truth Social. That was my truth, truth for the it, day. Yeah. I truthed it, okay. Because I knew that Truth Social is kind of on this like delay where movies that came out in 2018 are like very relevant right now. <laughs> so to relevant, what's going on yeah. over on yeah, Truth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It makes sense. And like, there's no bigger right wing film than Mama Mia. Here we go. Truly. Again. Yeah. If you want to talk about nationalism, honey. Honey. Yeah. You want to talk yeah. about America first? Maybe it's Mama Mia. Here we go yeah. again. <laughs> um, how did you feel? How Molly, I'm just fascinated by this experience yeah. of watching this mm. film. Mm. How did you feel about uh, Lily James's performance in this? Yeah, movie? yeah. You know, I, I really, I did appreciate her performance, and I feel like the thing with Lily James for me is she almost seems like too perfect of an actress. Of like, you can just slot her in anywhere. She's gonna do a good job. She, you know mm. what I mean? She's such a like almost like a neutral person to me of mm-hmm. like, I don't really have strong feelings about her. Mm-hmm. She can do comedy pretty well. She do drama fine. She's like, she's attractive. She's charming, blah, blah, blah. It's almost like, it's almost like, I can't think of anyone else to put in this movie. So I'm going to put Lily James in it. It's like kind of she's like place a, she is in my head. There's like a blank canvas. Like There's a blank canvas. Yes. Yeah. So I didn't expect much out of the fact that she was in it, but I... I kind of ended up liking the summer romp that she was on. Like she brought me around to just enjoying seeing her having a good time because Mm -hmm. I did feel like I didn't watch the first Mamma Mia and think, oh, I just want to dive deeper into like, what was that summer like? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't feel like I'm missing information. I need to see this thing. Mm -hmm. But I was like, maybe a third of the way through, I was like, yeah, I'm down with this to be like a vacation movie starring Lily James. That's cool. I'm I'm happy to see her having a good time out in grace great mm-hmm. it it was kind of it was nice to see her kind of in, interpret because i don't know if it's like laden in the screenplay or like given the direction but it was nice to see her inter- interpret like 
what was done. What, what's like Donna's personality? Because in the first movie, Donna is so like frantic. She doesn't want the marriage to happen. Mm -hmm. Like she doesn't want to lose that control with her daughter. Mm -hmm. That it was fun to see like a why people love Donna so much. Yeah, mm -hmm. like not under that pressure. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. And then I have one last question. <laughs> Yeah. How did you feel about the young actress that plays young Christine Baranski? Um, I didn't think about her at all. I don't. I truly. I feel like we have watched different films. Oh my god! Oh, okay. This is the. This is the. What? This is my. This is my line in the sand. Okay. I'm not gonna spoil who my MVP is, but it is this girl. <laughs> I hate to tell okay. you. <laughs> I'm not gonna spoil it, but it is her. But it is her. So, um. I would just consider revisiting this film. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> just you know, maybe it'll be uh, every every May. We'll, I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so let's... every May we rewatch a Mamma Mia, we, and you don't it's know if it's the original. Here we go one. again. I'm so I I don't want to admit it, but it's true. It is called Here We Go Again, and if you could say that as many times as you want, you know. Yeah. Um, oh, so, funny. so what I think is fascinating about this movie is that it is both a sequel and a prequel, drawing on the great inspiration of The Godfather Part Two, a cinematic <laughs> triumph, right? A, a, a peer, a fellow triumph. Yes, uh, something that everyone agrees is good, um, <laughs> except for those who don't. Um, so I thought that was interesting because I had never like thought about it in my mind, but I do. I think that is cool that they like tried to do two things at one time, mm -hmm. while also being like. So yeah, we only really need Meryl for a week of filming and Cher, oh, yeah, Cher can come in for a day. And I didn't look up any information about why Meryl Streep was not in this movie because I thought it would be in your production background, background. stuff. So did you From find what information I read, about that? There was one Vulture article that was like an oral history of, of yeah. Mamiya 2, which was just like a lot of what picking up what people have answered in like press junkets and whatever. And it seems like Meryl never really wanted to do a sequel because she didn't want and but if it did it shouldn't center on her character she was like i can i would do it but i i don't think it should be about donna it should, so it's it like the purity of the art for her that she was, was like it was such a perfect first performance yes. that i just can't um mm -hmm. that she was truly like i'm not it. doing yeah. it i'm not doing it so like if you want to figure out a different way to do it i could maybe do like a thing but she drew the line on the stand that like mm -hmm. i won't i won't be like the central character yeah. So from the very beginning, it was already like, okay, how would we do a sequel? I suspect Meryl's... it was not an artistic this is, stance. This yeah. is her only sequel in her entire filmography. Yeah. Wow. Which makes sense because it doesn't seem like a lot of the films she's been in have uh, the only one I can, The only one I can think of is like Series of Unfortunate Events, but she dies. Her character, <laughs> yeah. She, well, she also, I mean, technically she's in a sequel of the book, but they combined three books into one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, so. that's right. oh, I feel okay. like I could see a Devil Wears Prada sequel one day. Right? Sure. You don't think so? I think it's too focus? far now. I don't think it would be the same cast. I think, I mean, at this point, they're probably just going to remake the film because that's what everybody, that's, people yeah. just do that now. At, at its height, possibly. Like, yeah, they yeah. could have done one. Like, it's it's the off. kind of movie that I could imagine a sequel happening for. Maybe yeah. it's more what I'm trying to say. But yeah. I would I would love to see like a many years down the line, Devil Wears Prada, where did everybody go movie? Although, I mean, technically she's in Mary Poppins Returns which is like, oh. it's a, but it was, it's, I don't think she, I she think, is not obviously in the original. I think Mary it's Poppins. like, she doesn't, she doesn't want to sequel her own franchise performance. Films. Yes. yes. Mm. Her men, uh, yeah. Too bad they didn't get her in the Avengers. Um, yeah, they really missed out. They really missed out. So I, let's talk about this movie. Um, let's talk about the prequel aspect of this film first. Okay. Because I do think, uh, I'm, it was the part that this I is the fun. Was. This is the fun part of the film. I would say is the is the is the prequel. other things are not fun about this film. Yeah, well, the grief, the grief in the second oh, half. It's yeah. so grief sick. I can't even. It's a really a piece about grief. Is really yeah. what this movie yeah. is. Mm -hmm. It's, it's like very child. Well, we do here we go again. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. I would say this is Meryl's second most important role in which she chooses a child right after Sophie's Choice. Oh my god. Um, wow, a stretch. <laughs> she really tried to reach a joke, but she didn't. Didn't. Um, we should so... have made a pro-life joke when we were talking about nationalism. Sorry. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah it, it is. is. You could argue. What if this ends up being Truth Social's most uh, highly regarded films? Yeah. What if? <laughs> what if? My God. 
Um, mm. Let's start with the beginning of the film. So the beginning of the film, uh, they're graduating from, I don't know, Oxford, Cambridge. Yeah, one of those. Who knows? Who, who knows? And who cares? Yeah. Um, Because that's uh, famously not the point of this movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they sing this song. But she is valedictorian. She so. is valedictorian. Wait, so didn't you tell me when we watched the first Mamma Mia that like the fact that Sophie had English friends was going to be explained somehow by the this movie? I feel like it wasn't. I don't think I said that. <laughs> I feel like I feel like there were so many questions I had for the first no, we movie that like, you two were like, mm, just, just wait, just wait, because you won't get to explain truly every question you could ever have about this movie, and <laughs> yeah. you didn't. I think it answered everything. In fact, <laughs> um, it gave you a timeline of events. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Paris, at least we'll have Paris. Um, okay, so they sing it. Uh, she sings a song at graduation from whatever called "When I Kissed the Teacher." Now, Molly, as an educator, as an yeah, educator, obviously, how do, you love feel it. About, how do you feel about students kissing teachers? It's not like problematic because it's from the perspective of the student, right? So, like, the creepy thing is if it's in reverse. But uh, they kiss my but... students. Well, we also yeah. don't know is it is it a consensual kiss? It seemed she was bragging really about it. Like it. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. Uh, yeah, students teachers shouldn't kiss. That's my stance. That's, that's my stance. Hard cool. take there. Hard take. Um, so we move on. I just wanted to. <laughs> that I don't was all you just needed my commentary. We're gonna play that. that. We're gonna play a clip from the song. I enjoyed. Commentary. Okay, so taking out the actual lyrics because, like, it didn't seem like the the point was not like yes, literally it, she had no. had an affair with a teacher, but like was like me kind of upset frivolity. the rules. Frivolity. Yeah, I enjoy frivolity in a classroom. Yes. Um, I thought that was a nice setup for the movie. I I thought it was a little muddied in that, like, at first. When she gets introduced to give the speech, the teacher does this little like punctual as always. So and so is gonna give the speech. And it got this vibe of like everybody, even the teachers appreciate her like being a little bit of a rebel. But then by the yeah. end of the number, they seemed like genuinely upset at her. And I was like, okay, so like what are you trying to say about yeah. is she like a class clown, but in like a way that everyone can vibe with, or is she like actually kind of a problem? Yeah. I think it's that everyone is charmed by Donna. Yeah. I think Donna has an effort. And I do like this, honestly, I will say this this thing about Lily James's portrayal of mm -hmm. a young, what she's really doing is like a young Meryl Streep young impression, Meryl. which is yeah. crazy. <laughs> um, and she does have- Her own cousin. <laughs> Her own ninth cousin three times removed, <laughs> thrice removed. Um, I like that like she has that like happy-go-lucky, like devil may care, but not in like a- there's still something so light about it, if that makes sense. Like, it's not like she's like, she's not like reckless. Yeah, she's. Mm -hmm. I mean, she. One could it say reckless, it's reckless, but it's you not... don't get the sense that people are like hurt by Donna's decisions or anything no. like that. There are people who are reckless in that way of not caring the consequences for other people for of other their people, choices. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And exactly. I don't think that that's at all what they're telling you about her. Yeah, the closest they come to is like Rosie has a crush on Bill, and then she still goes off and like has sex with Bill, but, but it's Rosie's never relayed never... to. Yeah, Rosie yes. never tells her. Rosie never yeah. tells. And you get the impression that like, had she said anything, Donna would be like, okay, then. Yeah. I I don't want him. Right. But it is, I mean, it is fascinating, like knowing this Donna, even from graduation, she truly is like, my mom doesn't care. I truly am an individual. Like I am like my own person. So like now that I don't even have school anymore, it's truly like just pure independence <laughs> to do whatever you want that like, there's no one that can be that can be negatively affected by any of the the frivolity that she enjoys yeah. in the movie. Yeah. They honestly didn't dive as far into his, her relationship with her mom as I expected them to do mm -hmm. in this movie. Also, based on the fact that Cher is like the only thing that people talked about at all, so that should be in more of the movie. Um, yeah. But I thought it was interesting that like so she says something about how her mom won't react well to foreign romances because she had had one, she and then it pays the, off at the end with Andy Garcia. But like. I, I was watching this being like, I feel like what your mom is mad about is that you like went to Oxford and then like immediately went and got knocked up and then like lived on a Greek island for your whole life. And it doesn't seem like you maybe did the best you could have done with the education that you were given based on. That's true. She's like, she's like, I'm singing eight days 
eight shows a week in Vegas to put you yeah. to pay for Oxford. I also still don't understand like how much of a girl group is like, were yeah. they trying to be musicians or was it just a fun thing? Like it, us having a podcast where it's like yeah. a thing I do with my friends as a hobby. We are done like, on the dynamos. To be... <laughs> yes. But we're not like our life's goal is to like be professional podcasters. You yeah. know, is that the deal or were they like trying to be a real group? Well, I thought you were, that's why you got on True Social is to really expand our- To promote, yeah. To promote our brand. That's where everybody says the podcast market is hottest, is true. Yeah. Well, it's, it's right, right right wing media, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Joe I'm Rogan, sure Tucker baby. is going to be joining us uh, oh, in this arena at looking, any moment. Molly, Molly, don't talk about our special guest this episode. <laughs> <laughs> don't, he don't did call me the C word a couple times while we were making arrangements. <laughs> and we were like waffling on it, but we decided to go ahead with it. Yeah, but it's too just, big of a get. We just we yeah. just felt, you know, it was his frivolity, just like Don. Yeah, mm -hmm. ultimate. We we love his his double make care attitude. <laughs> the <laughs> idea that also we get we get Tucker Carlson to watch the pro shot of Legally Blonde. Oh, that's the next one. <laughs> it's so stupid. Okay. We want his legal analysis. Yeah, absolutely. Does he have a law background? I don't know. Sure. <laughs> this I is gonna shock you. I've never seen his his program before. <laughs> I know. You I never know. tuned in. Yeah. You were never tuned in? <laughs> I never I never truthed over to the tune. <laughs> to, to tuck myself into some Tucker <sighs> at tea time. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> yeah, it does feel like this was just like a thing that they did. Because yeah. even after they're like, sorry, oh, what? Oh, <laughs> the dynamo. <laughs> it like... took me a second to slow up, but I <laughs> backtracked on the conversation. Yes, the Donna, Donna and the Dynamos does not, it does not seem like they were ever trying to seriously pursue be a no. girl group, right? Yeah. I don't think so. But okay. I, I like that they're, I like their little friendship. That's fun. I like their friendship. I do wish that we knew what they ended up doing, like Rosie and Donna. <laughs> Because it felt like no, they are such side characters. I kind of like that they are like the epitome of like you know nothing about them other than like one trait. Rosie loves to eat cake, and, and Tanya, Tanya is loves well. is has a, a has a be still beating vagina. vagina. She is a beating vagina. But it's funny how they interpreted what their like background is because you would think that like we would find out why Rosie is so you know down to earth while tanya is very like she looked like she could be high society but it but on the this movie it was like no that that was already who they were before college like yeah like, they've been themselves they were it's like scooby-doo they, yeah uh, tanya's had the same haircut her whole life that i was gonna say i do love when movies do that where they're like the only way for people to know that it's the same character is to give them the exact give same the exact haircut same. yeah because you know how everyone famously has the exact same haircut their entire All their lives. for 40 yeah. 40 50 every, years every person yeah 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 only, it just makes sense um yeah. did you now tell the truth did you after you graduated college did you want to go back to rome go on like a whirlwind european tour and just leave all your cares behind i hate traveling oh this is another thing that i feel separates oh. me from the rest of humanity mm -hmm. uh but really just like all of the millennial generation because that's like supposed to be the things you like are supposed to not want to buy a house and to travel the world or yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. uh i find it logistically stressful mm -hmm. i find it expensive i find that it's difficult to like you find travel expensive molly i know <laughs> um i know many people have you know millions of dollars to pull from for traveling and that's just not my circumstance but that's just a, mm. that's just a weird thing about me um <laughs> and what about your trust fund i just i know <laughs> i know the trust says no you can't spend it on a summer in greece i mean oh. <laughs> Probably no, like Molly, Calicari doesn't exist. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I had a kid cry to me today because she was like, I keep losing at this game. And I was like, yeah. And then she was like, and then the, this like other staff person kept telling me just like, I can't, you can't skip turns. And I was like, yeah, well, you can't sk skip turns. Like you're trying to tell me the story like you're a victim, but like, I'm sorry, you yeah, lost the game. I'm not going to make you feel better. Okay. Anyway. That's what the was American I talking about? Oh no, I didn't want to do it. Yeah, that's that's the attitude I come I come up with every problem a kid has. I tell them, stop telling me about this. I'm not interested. Uh did I want to go? No, I don't enjoy traveling. I didn't want to do that. And I also feel like it's always people always talk about traveling as like expanding your horizons and stuff like that. And I feel like that's true to some extent, but it's like very difficult to actually make deep enough connections with people if you're like hopping around to like yeah. have a meaningful experience. So I 
I'm always like a little distrustful of the idea of like, oh, I'm like so much more cultured because I like went around for a few weeks. It's like, but like how many conversations did you have with people from other countries through that experience? I feel like you have to like actually move somewhere and like spend a good amount of time before you're going to have real relationships with people. So anyway, uh, no, I didn't. Did I want to not have to figure out how to get a job for a little bit? Uh, because that part was scary. Sure. But I didn't want to, uh, procrastinate on that via doing a whirlwind round the world trip. (coughs) Jesus Christ. Sorry. I feel like RJ and I did do this by way Uh, of moving moving to to Disney world. Interesting. I wouldn't even say we moved to Orlando, really. I would say we moved to Disney World and yeah. then just were like, well. I felt like the the like expanding like experiences, I think of when uh, Adam, when Adam and I, when I took Adam to the Grand Canyon for the first time, mm-hmm. he had a genuine reaction of like, I never knew I, I, my eyes could see something like this. And I think like, that's the part of like, tra- like traveling mm-hmm. to like ha- have new experiences. Like the physical act of seeing like, a literal location. My yeah. worldview is bigger now because I'm seeing something completely different. There's like, there's never a reason to travel or it's not like, <laughs> I also saw the Grand home. Canyon and I was like, wow, it really is very beautiful. Like I understand why yeah. this is a big thing that people want to go see. So I'm not against all travel. I just think that it is over hyped <laughs> as, like as like a concept of just like, tra- like travel is an inherent good. Yeah, no yeah. questions mm. about like where you're going, how long you're going for, what do you actually know about the place you're going to? Yeah. Like, I think there should be some questions of like what is worthwhile travel and what's not worthwhile travel. Yeah. I guess, yeah. The time when we went to Mont Saint Michel in France mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. was truly the most stressful time because we just when we got the we only planned as far as like the train to the area. Once we got to the train, we just knew that like there's a bus that you catch and then you get to Mont Saint Michel. And literally, when we got there, I was like, I don't know if this bus is going to come. I'm just trusting this. And I, you know, we didn't buy for data. So, like, I just trust that this number on this piece trusting of... Trusting the French. Tr- just literally just trusting a sign that's on this post that it'll happen. Trusting that there was no, you know, strikes no strike going on. Happening. The... Famously never strikes in France, yeah. Never. Yeah. So, like, I am a person who, like, I need to know the logistics of the travel yeah. in order to actually enjoy it. I'm not yeah. a person to be like, let me just fly to wherever and then I have no plan. Like... The closest thing I did that to was when my family and I went to Venice for a day because it was like a like a tour. Like a, mm-hmm. so we were in Venice for like a couple hours. Yeah. And I was like, I'm gonna just get lost and like just leave them because I know by seven PM I need to be back at a place. So it's like Well I and need... Venice is like a very touristy city. So yes. I feel like it's it's not a place you're gonna get too lost in. Yeah. Exactly. I will also say in the like bringing it back to the movie that part of what I enjoyed about the Lily James thing is that a skill I have acquired as an adult because I find travel so stressful as a real person that I've learned how to separate travel movies from real travel experiences and just Mm -hmm. be like I know it'll be fine for this character because Mm -hmm. I'm watching a movie and I'm not going to stress about the logistics of like you missed your boat or whatever because otherwise it's a nightmare for me to watch anything with travel like almost 100% of my nightmares are about travel mishaps it's about like packing a suitcase last minute and like yes. running late for things and whatever. That is where all of my anxiety lay. Absolutely. Her arriving to the hotel in France with no one there. I would be Yikes. like, well, I'm Yikes. sleeping on the street. I well, have no I guess idea. I'm going to die now. I... <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Never see my family again. Yeah. So ironic. I mean, that's a be- beautiful. Thank you, Segway. Absolutely. Thank you, Segway. <laughs> Thank you, Segway. Um, this movie, while you would think, well, I mean, we know that Donna is attached to Greece, but this movie doesn't start in Greece because this movie has to start in Paris in order for them to sing Waterloo. And it makes sense. (laughs) Here's the thing. I've been to Paris. Okay. Okay. Let me say that. Excuse me. If my sister Leslie was listening, she would be so mad that I brought it up again. But your only time, your only time in abroad, Adam's. Only, uh, only time I've ever brought up Paris. Um, Even when we landed at Paris, when the train was not working, and we had no idea how to get to France, how to get to Paris from the airport uh, to, to France. To France. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was, even that was, oh, yeah. Travel sucks. You're right, Molly. <laughs> it's stressful. <laughs> Don't do it. Sound off if you're a millennial who hates travel. I want to start a little, a little pod. I famously Let's make our own fl- discord. <laughs> This is so funny that RJ is agreeing with you because he makes fun of me for being a very, very stressed stress flyer. flyer. I know, I do, oh, I do. I'm an extremely anxious flyer. Are and you not anxious just... about like crashing or just like nope. the logistics of 
I mean, there's like, a, I don't like turbulence, but I think yeah. that's like human nature. To human be like, nature. I don't like yeah. shiking right. around in a box in the sky. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> but I just like, I get very, if I'm not like early, or mm-hmm. if I like, there was one time, I can't, I can't believe this is what we're talking about on this podcast, but there was one time where we were flying to New York from oh, yeah. Orlando. And the we had gotten an email from the airline that said your flight has been delayed by two hours, but it was a direct flight, so it was fine. So we were like, "Well, we have all this time. We'll just lay around at home a little bit. It's not going to be a big deal." And then all of a sudden, they emailed, and it was like an hour, and they were like, "Oh, just kidding. Your flight's back at the originally scheduled time." And there was no Jesus. way for us to have made it to the airport in time. We tried. Awful. We sped to the airport. We were like flying 90 down the yeah. road. We paid, paid, paid parking at the airport. Valet. So that we could like park run it in. as quickly as possible and run in. And then we, I, am sp- I'm, I have started to cry as we yeah. are running through the airport. Yeah. And we get one more email that says, just kidding, it's back to being delayed <gasps> by two hours. No, that should be illegal. And I, I, he collapsed. I literally collapsed on the ground and started to weep. Yeah. Did, were you, do you remember the time that I went to the wrong airport in Chicago? No. I was flying to see my family. I was flying out actually to Boston. My, it was my dad's 60th birthday, I think. So we were flying to surprise him. He didn't know that my sister and I were both going to come in on his birthday. And so I was texting my brother and he was trying to like respond to me under the table because he like didn't, yeah. he, my dad yeah. wasn't supposed to know that I was coming. I was supposed to go to O'Hare and I went to Mid- Midway, to Midway. Oh, and I like, God. I like went up to the security line and the guy like looked at my ticket and was and like, said, well, you're at the wrong airport. <gasps> yeah. But I made it. I like That's got in a cab. That's how early you were. That's how I was like, this is, this is why we're all airport dads on this podcast. I got in a cab <laughs> and I was like, I got to get to the airport. And he was like, I'm on it. And he got me there in time. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The graduation weekend for Loyola's graduation. <laughs> my sister Diana was living in Virginia. And so she yeah. flew into Chicago. So my mom and Leslie had driven over from Indiana. They picked me up. Yeah. And then we were going to go pick my sister up from the mm-hmm. airport. So we're having a good time. My sister's flying Chatting. alone. My sister has never fl- flown alone before. It was her first time, but blah, blah, blah. It was fine. We we're going to go pick her up. And we get to O'Hare and um, we're driving through the like pickup area or whatever. And I'm on the phone with Diana and she was like, I don't see you. And I was like, yeah, but what, what gate, what do you stand? Like, what's the number? Cause there's like, yeah. what terminal are you at? And she was like, I'm by door four. And I was like, no, what terminal are you at? And she was like, it just says four. There's like one, I see one, two, three, four. And I was like, there are no doors that have numbers here at O'Hare. And she said, but I'm not at (laughs) O'Hare. And I handed the phone to my other sister, Leslie, immediately because I was like, I'm not. No, this is my graduation weekend. (laughs) I don't have to deal with this. this. So should she go to Midway? She so so she had flown into Midway and my mom okay. thought she flew into O'Hare. And so we were at I O'Hare. Thought, I thought for a second, because you said there were like four doors that it was like she flew into South Bend. <laughs> like it was like not even the no. right city. <laughs> no, thank God. She was at Midway, but we were going to stay in Evanston. So mom was like, Diana, I need you to take a cab to Evanston from Midway. And my sister had never taken a cab alone before. And she was like, I don't know. <laughs> it was a really... We still make fun of my mother for this because she messed up so bad. Yeah. Um. Anyway, wow. this is all fun. Mamma mia. They're in Mama Paris. Mia. So they're in Paris. And you know how Paris cafes famously have a lot of space inside of them? If you've yeah, ever been to Paris, you know deal. they, they never put the cafe mm-hmm. tables next to each other. Mm-hmm. There's tons Very of space. Wide, yeah. And the other thing Paris loves, <laughs> and I'm sure you remember this too from when you've been, mm-hmm. is they love a themed restaurant. <laughs> they're really mm. into themed yeah. restaurants. Kitschy dining is Kitchy kind of yes. my, the like number one thing I think of when I think of Paris. When yeah. I yes, think of absolutely. Paris, I think of, yeah, kitsch. Yeah. Not elegance or beauty or um, strikes. Um, so at this diner, Harry and Donna are <laughs> break into a song called Waterloo by ABBA. Yeah. Their and Eurovision winning song, Waterloo. The, 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 the song, song that, that started it all. That put them on the map. Yeah. And there's something about how stupid. It was when this movie, <laughs> when, this, when this happened in the movie, the first time I saw it, and I realized what this was doing once it like yeah. once you realize that it's not only is it themed but it's Napoleon themed it has right. to be for the Waterloo joke to make sense. I was like, 
You know what? And I do agree. The first movie is not super serious, but the first movie would have never done this. Like, this is like a step too far, I feel like, mm. for the first film. I yeah. think it's a little too self-aware, too little wink, wink, nod, nod to yeah. the audience. Because I think the first one is still trying to be like, we're do we're like updating the Greek comedy in like this fun way where we have the Greek chorus. Ha ha ha. I don't Whereas even know like, thought that hard about it. But yeah, I mean, I we, think they're trying to make the ABBA songs make sense in a plot and not mm-hmm. trying to work a plot around ABBA songs in the sure. first. Yeah. And I they really try and, to ground it on the like given circumstances of the story so that there's no other option but to sing ABBA, mm. ABBA at this heightened moment. <laughs> right. And I mean, I will say if I was at this um, Napoleon themed French restaurant, I think I would be led to be singing Waterloo. I mean, what other song? What other song about Napoleon are you going to sing in Napoleon theme yeah. restaurant? You know what I'm saying? So I guess that makes sense in that regard. I do. I think it is funny. I I don't love when movie musicals or jukebox musicals do the thing where they structure a plot around the songs that they want to put in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That being said, I think this and Fernando are two of the funniest things this movie could have ever done because they yeah. are so fucking bonkers yeah. i mean look n- name a better uh set piece about compulsory heterosexuality right you know what i mean yeah mm-hmm. it's, it's, for it's the not gay a topic to sing. it's not a topic that we we've, we've seen enough musical treatment on and yeah. Yeah. the idea of having them sing waterloo for harry <laughs> for harry to be talking about uh his first and let's assume probably only time only being time. with a woman yeah uh is just it's really great. It's genuinely very smart. And yeah. Waterloo is also my favorite ABBA song. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I really enjoyed this one. Yeah. yeah. It's so fun. Also, it's like so big. It's very, yeah. like there's some Busby Berkeley elements to it. Like it's like. It is Busby. It's very fun. I like all the like dancers, the like just random chorus people. Yeah. I just like. Yeah. The dancer in a wheelchair. Is... That there's so spins. many the dancer in the wheelchair yeah. that spins. There's like so many little like tableau, just like cut shots of like them moving around. I just think like, it's feeding the grapes. Yeah, yeah. it's just all gas. silly. Yeah. It's just very silly. Also want to shout out the actor who plays Harry, young Harry, yes, um, yes. who also plays his name also Harry, but he's on Fleabag. Yes, he's on Fleabag. He's the he's the boyfriend that she the overly is like always boyfriend. overly sensitive boyfriend she's always breaking up with. Yeah. And gosh, if this guy does not do a perfect job of playing a man that you would not fall in love with, it's yeah. he's so good at that. You know what it is? It's like giving like young Hugh Grant like when. You know, kind of that like Yohu um, Grant, who does not have the charm to pull. Who from. does not have the charm to pull it off? What it's just like, oh, I see what you're trying to do, but it's it just kind of you feel sorry for him rather I than. I feel like, like he's fun. probably like extremely charismatic in real life. You know what I mean? Yes, like he's yeah. very handsome. I'm sure that he's like he's like such a great people person yeah. in real life, but he is so good at playing he's this so kind of character. This. Yeah, yeah, because he's not afraid to like look dumb and like silly. Yeah. He's yeah. perfectly likable, which is like yeah. what is so nice. What there is no villain in this movie. I mean, yeah. there's really no villain. Well, the there's that one storm. Mm. Oh my Na- god! It's, it's a man versus nature. nature. <laughs> it's, a man versus nature. <laughs> it's a man versus nature documentary, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Um, in a lot of ways, this is Twister. You're right. <laughs> So I think it's important to remember that. Um, but, I, yeah, I like that. Like they don't make any of like Sam is obviously supposed to be the great guy, but Bill's also like fun. I just like it's all it's all just like ugh. it's like it it's the you know making rash decisions in your twenties. Like you you see someone for one thing and then they turn out to be another thing, and it's just part of like it's top hat. It's top hat, sure. In there's no villain in Top Hat. Oh, okay. Just circumstance. It's a sitcom. Oh, okay. yeah. The villain is the villain is oh. the villain is not communicating. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The villain is our circumstances. Mm. Mm, say that. <laughs> um. So I I just like Waterloo. I think it's a great little number in the middle of this film. So then we meet. She goes to Greece. She has sex with Harry. Sorry, we do need to make that clear. 
that's the only way that this one this 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 the prequel makes sense. I feel yes. like people understand that that's what has to happen. Unprotected. Whole... Uh, it has to be unprotected three times. Yeah, absolutely. Or you know, there's a nine percent chance. Three times. Oh, with three different. With, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought the guy you just like did not understand reproduction. You were like, as we all know, you have to have sex three times. Three three times. Yeah, third time's yeah. the charm. Every absolutely. time is a third of a baby, and then <laughs> the last thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um. So then she goes. She tries to get to Greece. Uh, no, like real. Like, she just says like she just feels that she needs to go. She just thinks she has to go to Greece. Yeah. And that's all you're given. You but know, also, yeah. yeah. I the way her character is, I also believe that she's a girl who was like, some somebody said Greece to me once, and I've thought about it ever since. So I yeah. got I got to just go just to see what it's like. I heard Greece is the word. So yes, yeah. Because this is probably 1978 when this when this story is set. Sure. Well, <gasps> don't they talk about it's 70 something in the first movie? I feel like they do name the summer. They, I think they, I think you're right. I think they do. Yeah. Um, it doesn't, the timeline really doesn't mm, take hold water when you mm. like start to glance at it a little bit, but it's fine. It's not what we're here for. It's not no. what I'm, that's not what I care about when I watch a movie musical. Um, so she meets Bill. They go sailboating because Bill is the, uh, the greatest sailboater. sailor. Yeah. The greatest sailor in, mm-hmm. in Europe. And um, they have a little, they don't have a tryst. Not yet. Not yet. Their mm-hmm. tryst is later. Mm-hmm. Uh, they end up on Calicari, um, where she stumbles upon a horse in a house. What is this movie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to explain it as if it would make sense for me to explain it, and it really doesn't. It's vibes. The movie's vibes. Should we just, I mean, yeah, should we just... Yeah, should we Sam. Let's, should we just talk about the three men? Sure. The actors, the young men? The young men, yes. Okay. I was so hot for Bill when I saw it in theaters. I think I of the like, three, I think Bill is the hot. I, I was agree. Like, for sure. I, I would not. Which is funny because the, of the older, the older ones, he's the least hot. Stellan mm. Yeah. Who do you think is the hottest of the older ones? Because I would say Colin Firth for sure. I in the first one, I would say it's Pierce Brosnan, but in this one, I would say it's Colin Firth. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because there's something about the way he saw the way Colin Firth got salt and peppery in the 10 yeah. years between, yeah. I was like, Oh my God, a gentleman, mm-hmm. a gentleman caller. Uh, yeah. I think I would, <laughs> I don't blame, I don't blame young Donna for, you know, no, falling for the charm. I celebrate Absolutely. young I Donna. I celebrate young Donna. Yeah. Seeing this beautiful man on this beautiful boat. I would be like, yeah, maybe this, you know what? I had that feeling and it's right here. I mean, I would never get on a boat with a man I just met. That's an insane <laughs> thing to do, but he's hot. No, he's hot. He is hot. <laughs> There's one thing we can point, say. He, is hot. He, yes. he is hot. He's really hot. Um. Then the other thing I like about the prequel, and then that's kind of all I really want to talk about, is uh, the friends <laughs> come and visit Greece. Mm-hmm. And this is where they go to, because they're going to perform at the at the bar. We need the origin story. That's right. We great. need the origin story of how they wrote the song, Mamma Mia. Because in, right. in the world of the show, Mm-hmm. They are writing the song. Mm-hmm. Look, well, this is weird because bold. we don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it was bold that, like, to the B side thing that you said earlier, RJ. Mm-hmm. I was nervous going into this that I thought so. They used up most of the All famous of the, ABBA songs yes, already. Absolutely. Um, and so I thought it was bold that they were just like, do you know what? We're just gonna do them again. We're just gonna do it again. Yeah. We're just doing them again. But I would say in this one, I do think they're better placed. Because I think yeah. in, in Mamma Mia, the original, they're so early that then you're yeah. like... When they did I Have a Dream, I was like, oh yeah, it fits a lot better for like, I'm looking at the hotel and I'm thinking mm-hmm. about what it could be and blah, 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 rather or, than... Uh, or even like Pierce Brosnan's song when he does the SOS reprise. Does it count as a reprise if okay, it's done that, on the sequel? <laughs> that I could not handle. Them trying to use it in like this true, like, let me think about my sorrow. Dream. Sorrow. My sorrow. S O S S Sosro Sosro. Um, but I did like the the origin story of Mom. Yeah, like that. Yeah, she's singing from heartache. Heartache does feel good at a place like this. Yeah, it's true that this movie doesn't. I mean, she has spent so much of this movie being Lily James's character, Young Donna. Yeah, mm-hmm. the character named Young Donna <laughs> spent so much of this movie being so light, effervescent, bubbly, fluffy, just like whatever but that is not the only thing they give her character to do she does have this like you know 
whatever this moment of sadness about Sam kind of like breaking her heart a little bit. And then we do actually get this really cool. I I think like what the reason we're doing this for, for mother's day, obviously is the like mm. the Sophie coming into the world of it all. Um, Anything else we want to talk about the prequel? Oh, the, the men. Men, the men, anybody? Um, I mean, Sam is fine. I I believe that they fell in love because they showed me them being in love. But there's something really remarkable about the actual like events between them. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's just they're on. She's on vacation. She falls in love. Yeah, that's what happens. I mean, I really do think the the prequel aspect of, of the movie would not have worked if they didn't have someone as game as Lily James. As Lily James, yeah, yeah. Which is so funny because she was so not this in Downton Abbey. Like she was frumpy. Yeah, she dowdy. was like very what? Yes, on Downton Abbey. Yes, yeah. she's not. She's like the hot young cousin that's like coming in and having adventures and stuff. She is. She is the young cousin. I wouldn't, she wasn't like she a, was not she, i don't think her character is supposed to be hot when she first enters the show it felt very much like oh we have to take care of her like we got to take care of this one she was like she was like yes so maybe she was like young but she wasn't frumpy she wasn't like a, a maid character or no, something she or was she like maid. what's the middle sister down or something yeah um, she wasn't like um, edith yeah she wasn't edith because edith like, is famously looked- the one who they're like god why are you <laughs> so hideous edith yeah. <laughs> She's like, okay. And then she gets to marry me. like a count or whatever. And he, she gets like the biggest title of all of them. I don't know. I know what happens at the end of the show. I refuse to watch the movies. I I enjoyed Downton Abbey when it was first on, but like, girl, you do not, you do not think I'm going to watch all of this content. Do you? It doesn't sustain itself for that amount of time. Yeah. When did you stop? At the rape. Oh, oh. the end. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That it was, was like, it was really tough to watch. We saw it. We saw him get him. And then we were like, okay. We yeah. Put he that- can- or he dies. We don't know. Does he kill him? We don't know. Did he do it? Mm-hmm. Um, but the the rapist does die, so I guess that's good. I don't know. What are we doing? <laughs> are we doing? It should have it should have been like three seasons and done, really. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, enough about that. I would I do want to say my last part is that I do I have to say and I'm going to say it again later when yeah. we get to MVP, but the young the young girl. Yeah, tell us about this tell young about girl that. who plays Christine okay. Baranski's character, Tanya. Tanya. Um, Jessica, young, Ke- Jessica Keenan Wynn plays young Tanya. And I just, this is, this is remarkable casting. This is brilliance. This is, this is someone who has studied Christine Baranski uh, through multiple forms of media through many years and really mm-hmm. gets what makes Christine Baranski tick. And I just think it's a, an indelible performance, to be quite honest. She's a Broadway girly. She was in mm-hmm. Heather's The Musical. Mm-hmm. She, she was a Heather. She was a Heather. Heather C. Oh, wait, which Heather? Heather Chandler. Which one? Oh, is she that was Heather Chandler. Oh, that's is that Rose McGowan? No. Okay. Um. No, I don't know what her name is in the '80s movie, but she's the she's the main one. Oh. But now no. that you say that, and I've seen like video clips of them recording the original cast album, I totally she's do see that that's the same person. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on to the sequel. <laughs> Part two of them. Um. Of the movie. Amanda Seyfried. Amanda Seyfried. Star and actress. Star and actress. Absolutely. Mm. That is correct. That's absolutely correct. Thank you for saying that. Which I do that. think, I like, does she have a, do people just think star? No, because I think people regard her as a great, a good actress, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, which I is, would say great actress, but I just think does, does can- her job every time. Yeah. You know what I mean? And in a way that's generally more interesting to me than the way that Lily James does her job every time. That's a funny story. My friend, my friend from mm-hmm. Mafia, he is in like the same circles as Amanda. Oh, okay. There, it was funny because we he, could get on get on the pod because he think. was. I guess she was. She was invite. She invited him to one of her close friends' like baby shower. Oh. So he was like, "Does anyone want to fly to New York and come to this baby shower with me?" And Amanda said, "I was like, well, would you come on the pod? Because we've done two already. We've done two of her works. It's yeah, three. Three. <laughs> Are we counting both? Both." Mamas? Yes, as yes. individuals. Mamas, mamas and their mama, meals. Each mama yeah, each and mama. then Les Mis. Yeah. yeah. Look, I'm never sad to see her in a movie. Yeah, that's yeah. true. You know? It's, true. it's very true. She does a great job. Again, looks gorgeous on a Greek island. That should be her natural habitat. I Cast know. yourself she, in more movies set in Greece. She looks so good this tan. Do you know what yeah. I mean? She looks great. Like, <sighs> everybody looks great. 
Everybody looks great. I don't know what to say. I mean, it, it, this movie does both of these movies. The, if there's one thing they do correctly, it's make you want to visit Greece. Yeah. You watch the movie and you're like, Greece better have been giving them a tax break, but they're probably not organized enough to do something like no, that at the time. No, probably not, unfortunately. She and Dominic Cooper, when they reunite, uh, you, you know, keeping it? themselves in the running for the bisexual award yeah. um, mm-hmm. of the year. He, he did age very nicely, didn't he? Yeah. Got a good nice. little patina nice. on him. Mm-hmm. Just like filled out a little bit more. Yeah. Which is nice. I think, too, I like that this movie isn't a i mean it has the like will are they are they on the rocks are, are they, they gonna the be rocks? okay or whatever but really the movie is not about a love story the movie is about like how sophie is i mean i i i don't want to be like the movie's about grief but the movie is like about how sophie is going to soldier on through motherhood while having lost her own mother and will be su- but realizes she'll be supported by all of her, all yeah. of her family. It's funny because while I was writing that summary, it ended up being, I was trying to write it from Sophie's perspective just to be like, just to anchor it. And as I was writing it, I was like, this is, it is Sophie's story. Like it is, it's Sophie's story to like learn something, you know, to to learn that she is able to, to be her best self because yeah. her mom yeah gave her everything she needed yeah it's interesting that the first movie is about sophie's wedding so it seems like it should be sophie's story but really it's donna's story and it's kind of the reverse where it's it seems like more on donna but really it is sophie's story really yeah yeah Yeah. um i like uh i like that they have everybody come back i mean that's the bit of like dancing queen and bill bill holding harry like it's the titanic is very silly so i was like on one one part of me was like that's funny and then another part i was like he's in homophobic <laughs> like especially harry like is actually canonically gay it's kind of weird to be like wouldn't it be funny if he did this with a man like not really he probably would if he was in love with that man yeah i just yeah he's sure okay. <laughs> i don't i don't think this movie exists within the world of homophobia i think this movie oh, exists outside okay. of homophobia mm-hmm. yeah okay um removed itself from such in, a project. an ethereal plane yeah. is where this movie okay. exists mm-hmm. <laughs> no i mean i mean that's a valid point i don't think it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's a punching down joke yeah i get that it could be interpreted that way but i didn't it didn't feel like to me that that was the intent which is not always i do wonder though because they don't really bring up harry's sexuality they no. At all well, in this they movie, do in like? the in the flashback and him saying like I've never done this yes. before and like it's all very obviously because yeah it he feels like actually want to yeah it's using the knowledge that people already know that you what who yeah. you are in in the current state anyway it does feel but like he doesn't like bring his boyfriend along on yeah the right right yeah. but it does it does feel like is that like a 2018 like well Colin Firth isn't gay so we shouldn't like or oh we shouldn't, I didn't think like, about that at all. Because it's like in the first movie, it was kind of like a punchline that he. Oh, it's yeah. definitely a punchline in the first movie. So that yeah. I wonder if this was their way of being like, let's just show you like this, and then like he is just another dad, just a, a dad energy. He's the he's the nerdy dad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I didn't need them to like dive more into his sexuality or whatever. And I certainly like laughed when I saw the Titanic. It was one of those things where yes. I was like, I find this funny. I'm not feeling like it's homophobic, mm-hmm. but then like thinking about it again is mm-hmm. like that sort of thing mm-hmm. so i do i agree that like the overall vibe of this movie is not i mean it's not putting out at anybody it's like very clear very clear they were just trying to like make a fun time do some jokes not and not uh get drunk yeah yeah and in that and vulture... not do too many pc jokes you know what yes. i mean RJ? Yeah. Oh, which is why God. rj loves I love it. it rj loves it yeah. um in that vulture article in they had said that like it seems like they brought us back because they want to see like two old guys try to dance again like yeah they were, like they very much came into that like that's why we're here like to, yeah. to be goofy yeah can i also say on the lily james front really good dancer like especially that that yeah. scene in the boat i was like wow she like she really knows how to move. I wonder if she had any dance background. Cause I just was like, mm. she didn't like pull any moves that were spectacular, but I was like, she like really seems like she knows what she's doing. On a dance it was giving, you know what it was giving? It was giving a little Debbie Reynolds in the like mm. cutesy, like in a, cause his song, like, why did it have to be me? Like she was like very playful, like very, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. A star is born. Um, so that's the dads. Anything about Pierce Brosnan specifically? Selling Scar's Garden. We've talked Not about really. Colin Firth. It, it was just funny that she was like, oh, but Bill and Harry aren't even going to be here. And he's like, well, I'm 
I'm here. I'm like, I'm supporting you. But it, it, I, I was kind of interpreting when I read the summary, it was like, she does have a support system, but she's not seeing all of them because she just thinks that it's Donna that I don't have. So yeah. I can't do yeah. any of it. I almost wish that they had done less of like when she started to say like, here's our bill and Harry won't be here. I was like, okay, so this movie just like nobody from the first movie is going to be in it. And I, I think they were trying to set me up for being excited when everybody came back, but I was like, this is like a little bit too much where now I'm sort of losing interest in the movie yeah, a little bit. You're if you're like, not going to show me any of the same characters. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So were you genuinely surprised when they like showed up when they showed Sweden and Tokyo <laughs> or did you uh, know that they were going to be in the movie? No, I will no, say I if there's I one, one okay. yeah. I will say there's if there's one joke that's punching down it's the weird fat joke in is this the, movie that's, is yeah. the twin brother yeah, twin brother me Yeah I definitely when I saw him I was like oh a fat suit are we not we're not doing those anymore right and then yeah. I figured out that it was his twin so it wasn't like I thought maybe they were going to put him in him like he a yes. fat suit the whole time and I was like this doesn't seem good natured yeah. but they also didn't really make a joke about his size either like it's it was, yeah, a it was visual to distinguish joke maybe, that that was there his like twin yeah, yeah there wasn't like anything where it was like oh i'm embarrassed that like the fat version of me is gonna accept the award or anything like that yeah um yeah. but i don't know i'm a standard size person so i won't comment on whether or not it's offensive for that visual bit to be in there i just felt like they could have done you know anything else to differentiate him a toupee maybe. yeah it could have been like a really bad toupee that would be funny Mm. Or maybe it was like a terrible spray tan or something. There could be some other visual thing that could be differentiating them. It also didn't even need to have it. Does it's a stupid <laughs> joke. It doesn't pay off at all. I will say, like the joke yeah. of him having a twin and being like, "I'm gonna go out." Who cares? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> it's um, a Swedish award. No one cares what happens in Sweden. Whatever. No, the I Nobels. Who cares? I did uh. try to look up because I think this is a real award, and I was trying to look up if this was an actual award that has been given to Stellan Star Skarsgård oh, in his career, because he is a Swede. prominent Swede. Yeah. So. Just as prominent as ABBA themselves. Yeah. Um, so uh, we've come to the climax of the film in mm -hmm. which we have to talk about Cher. <clears throat> and what is there to say? What what's is there to share about Cher? What's there to about share Cher? about Cher? Okay, I wrote that the only thing I want to talk about was Cher's outfit in this final scene. So she is Oh, in wearing... the final one. The final one. The, the silver? The silver. I want to talk the about sleeves. the silver. Mm -hmm. The silver. I mean, yeah. am I usurping a, another nope. well, there was... we dive in? Well, there was dive the other right costume. right into those puffy sleeves. There was another costume where before Fernando starts, she's wearing, like, in her arrival outfit. Yeah. It's and like then... a white suit, right? Yes, and then a white suit. And then they, and then um, Sophie's like, I've always wanted to be a Donna and Dynamo, so I'm going to perform. And then when they pan back to her, she's wearing a completely different outfit. It's like green with like the big sleeves. I think it's silver. I think it's just what's under like, the jacket. It's what's under the jacket. Okay. Yeah. I was just so like, she oh. is wearing what I'm going to describe as mm -hmm. a structured, tailored vest yeah. with sequin puff sleeves mm -hmm. slapped onto it. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then right. silk cargo pants silk tapered cargo pants tapered mm -hmm. and i want to know why she's wearing that and i'm curious your thoughts as to why of, of just truly every piece of clothing in the universe that they could have put on Cher. i just want to be clear this is her fernando look or is this at the baptism or is this super trooper oh god i think it's i think it's her fernando look because okay. Super, Super Trooper, because Super Trooper had the stars. Everyone looked the same. Everyone had the same like. I mean, she has outfit. the most incredible wig in the Super Trooper. Yeah. I look. mean, the wigs. I mean, the wigs I think alone. The, share wigs are... the wigs alone. The wigs are a separate question. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm talking about. We are not discussing the wigs at this moment. We're not discussing the wigs. Okay. <laughs> the wigs can wait. Is the name of my documentary. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think this is the costume that I was. Yes, this is the costume that I was was bringing up like after the suit this is a, allegedly supposed to be underneath that suit no how did you get those puffy <laughs> sleeves under those sleeves i mean it's the same necklace but how do those unless she unless i gotta look it up too unless it's the vest underneath and then she puts, molly i'm happy to share my screen please with you. please share screen and then she puts on the because there are like jackets where it's just the puffy the we gotta start making sleeves. this a visual podcast so that we can have these discussions okay yes this the the thing that really gets me is the pants. It's the it's the tailoredness 
of it, those can't be the it, same pants. It's the tailoredness of the hey, vest girl, sorry, in girl. contrast with the puffiness it, of the sleeve. Oh wait, go to this one. It is like the same down pant. middle where she's like walking because that gives you the best overall. Uh, yeah, that's a good. That's another good one. I feel. I mean, are those not pockets? I on think the they're sides? pleats. How think many? Pleats. Here, how many side, pockets side are in these pants? Look. Why yeah. are these photos so bad? <laughs> I think it is this. It's allegedly the same so pants. The Greek, the, the Greek blue filter. Yeah, I think I they're mean, pleats. I hate to tell you, I think they're crazy, pleats. crazy, right? Okay, I guess they're pleats. I guess that. So she was. So they're like suit pants. They're like suit tailored, pants tailored vest, sequin sleeves. That I think it gets put on as a jacket to keep her. It's, it's oh, you think that's not attached? Because there's no way that you think it's a shrug. I think it's a shrug because there's it's no way that can be shrug. underneath that suit, that blazer. I don't know. Like, look at this one. This one. This one. This one. Yeah, you think those sleeves are in there? It's that's the shirt. Oh, I see though. what you're but saying the about vest. the peak of think, silver. But the vest might be what's in there, and then she puts on the sleeves as like. A rap or so what know, is this what is this telling us about the character she Vegas, comes baby. in Vegas. she comes in guarded and then she reveals her true self through the sleeves a or private helicopter i mean I and think... then a private mm -hmm. car in mm -hmm. on the island not a single vehicle in this island also why do we think that this mother who <sighs> was oh, doing geez. shows in vegas for what like the whole deal is like she's she's just she's a working showbiz girl mm -hmm. don't they basically say in the first movie like she disagreed she like couldn't deal with donna having a child out of wedlock like what about this character says that we think yeah it doesn't it doesn't track i i don't want to to hold it to too high of a plot standard because would you say that i mean we don't know the father situation but did she now did ruby have donna out of wedlock and so she re she resents that about herself or it like she like doesn't want repeated the one mistake yes, I told don't you not make to. the same mistake yeah which funny is then S sophie does it because they're technically not married so is it a familial curse mm. is it is it a curse well, that let's she not, let's not call having children of wedlock a curse i think that's not a stance that we want to take as a whole i think that's there, where we're well, that's where we stand on i will podcast. say there was a moment where when she was doing the baptism and then like the ghost of donna was there that i was like if you like scored this movie differently it feels like uh, this daughter was like doomed to live the same life as my mother. Okay, did here's in, my like, take. Horror film. Here's my take about Molly's question. Molly's question is why, why is she, she wearing why is she this? wearing this outfit? <laughs> and here's two things. First, she has to visually symbolize symbolize that she is not like all the other characters in the film. And by that I mean everybody else, except for like maybe Colin Firth's character because he comes in like a suit. But pretty much everybody else is like Greek vibes. We're giving, we're giving summer. We're giving summer. We're giving, we're giving patterns. Resort. We're giving resort colors. Wear. Resort. Yeah. Wear. Yes, it's a cocoon. <laughs> we're the yes. cocoon, and then it's a cocoon. We're, we're wearing we're a poncho. Cocoon. We're wearing a wrap. We're wearing whatever. Yes. Sasha she Cole, has to, she Sasha has Cole to, be a uh, a caftan or some suit. <laughs> she has to visually look exactly the opposite of whatever that is. Mm -hmm. She also has to because she is taking. She's ostensibly she's taking the place of Meryl Streep's role in the film and by that i mean like high high ranking prestige. diva yeah mm -hmm. but visually she has to exactly contrast that because you have to realize that she is so different from her own daughter she is the and, antithesis if and you donna will, resented of, her of so donna's did... dungarees if donna is dungarees her mother is a pantsuit her mother is hillary clinton Sequent. on on 2016 the the election day but it's not it's not she's not serving hillary clinton vibes she's, as a not, character. Serving she's not because she's still at the end of the day is still a performer and so that's why we have mm. to reveal from the pantsuit the jacket reveal into whatever the hell this top a is. silver halter yeah. it's not even silver it's like i mean adam olive. i think it's the it's the best movie musical he's ever seen or whatever but this might be the worst costume i've ever seen in a movie musical oh, I, think I don't think i've I think ever this had is one of the ugliest reaction. i it's such an the sleep I think if it was sleeveless, I might be like fine with it. There's those sleeves are yeah. so bad. Bob Mackie is is crying yes. somewhere. He was Weeping. like, "Why? I, you you have my number on speed. Why dial. would you? Why would you put my darling share in this outfit?" I I gotta say though, if we are gonna talk about, let's talk about the wigs. Let's okay, talk about the husband. Transition okay. to wigs. Okay, the, wigs. Yeah. the wig. The wig. This blonde wig on share looks incredible. Yeah. I was like, why has share never been? I mean, I share iconically has like beautifully long black long dark hair. hair yeah but my god platinum blonde share in a little curled moment oh my god she looks amazing. she looks so like 
ageless. She literally, yeah. I, her skin looks incredible. It's, I can't, I can't even believe she's a real person. She's not a real person. She's not a real person. I hate to tell you. Um, I almost, I, I wish, the wigs. I wish Moonstruck had like one song so we could watch it because that's such yeah. a great movie. She does a great performance. Moonstruck would be a great opera, not musical opera. Wow. Oh, wow. Let's dance. I mean, look, <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed so much about Cherry's performance that I just wish that this outfit wasn't distracting me. Yes. Yeah, during I agree. It because yeah, she's just a star, and that's what she does. And she comes in for five minutes, and she does a number, and she is a star, and that's great. The comedy of it being that she had once loved a man named Fernando, and then somehow this man is the exact man that he is, is the hotel, is the hotel manager, manager. Yes. at the Casa Bella Donna in Greece on Calicari. And is, it, so is Donna's father? Is that also what we're supposed to understand? They don't. They don't. They don't really talk. They don't really say it. But yeah. I also read a trivia fact that was like, although it's never said, there it is believed that for the man for Na- that she's singing about is the past love of her life. And it was like, no, I don't. I don't think it could be more clearer than what <laughs> that, that was they the give man. it in this oh, movie. The in love with each other was is on the text. That's not. <laughs> that's not the at all. It is funny that um, Tanya, like, and other girl, what's her name? Rosie. 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 The Tanya and Rosie both have a moment with this guy, and then it turns out that it's probably Donna's dad. Yeah. 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 Maybe. Be still my beating vagina. A great line. A truly iconic line. I screamed in the theater. It is funny, because the screenplay has those gems, and then there's, like, lines that are, like, being sad is being sad like it's just very poetry like, <laughs> that, the, there were many times that lines were said that i was like wow poetry yeah. <laughs> i would like to see this in a crowd i think that that probably would enhance my experience of it significantly yeah um like the way i want i do want to see like rocky horror in a in, yes. a in a crazy movie theater yeah 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 there was something But see, but Meryl don't does ca- come back. Don't count out Miss Meryl Streep, Mama. Don't count out Ma- Mary. There is a shot in this movie. I do think. I think there are a lot of things that I think are better about this. But there is one shot in particular that I think is actually really cool that they do, and it is, uh, it is when they're going into the chapel, and S- Sophie's holding the baby, about to go in for the baptism. So you see her walk. You cut from an exterior view outside the chapel of her walking in and then you cut to an interior view inside the chapel and in walks lily james holding baby Baby sophie Sophie. in her own baptism and i was like see i think they i think this person who made this movie thought about this movie i don't think yeah i think it is for entertainment it's for fluff but i do think there are some things like that where i was like Somebody, somebody did craft this film. Yeah, I will yeah. say they don't dwell on any of it too long, which I think is like the real strong point. Is that they're mm-hmm. like, we're going to sprinkle in a little bit of something substantive, but it's not going to. That's not going to be the main purpose of why you're here. Um, but I do. I mean, I do like it as a thing about like motherhood being so. I don't know, like fulfilling and uh, yeah. not needing to necessarily have a partner in order to like embark mm-hmm. on that and mm-hmm. uh being able to like draw strength from the fact that you have this caretaker role and then that passes on to the next generation and blah blah mm-hmm. blah i mean i think i think there's some like, very lovely things in it about sophie and donna and i think stuff. i i said this in the when we watched the first one but i was like this it's so cool that the movie never tries to make fun of donna it never tries to Mm -hmm. like tear her down for her decisions and i think again like even going back into watching the decisions happen in real time as we do in this like prequel part of this movie they still like keep it very like she's just having a good time there's no like there's no judgment about donna that this is what she's choosing to do yeah Yeah. like it's she's not like a bad person i think actually the the sequence in which she like has gives birth is like actually really 
um very sweet and like yeah. uh yes with the with the like great aunt that the, yes, the greek lady the greek aunt Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do always like stories that have like women helping each other through things like childbirth mm-hmm. and this sort of like, it takes a village sort of thing of like, there there's someone that will be there that will support you through it because like that's like women care for each other in that there's way. Just like a communal, really nice. yes. Yeah. Are you are you into to fetch a mid to fetch the midwives? What is that show? Call, call, call the, the midwife. midwife? Call no, I've never seen midwife? it. Oh, okay, it's British, right? I think so. I think so. Um, I just realized I was referencing fetch the bolt cutters by yeah (laughs) i was actually thinking of and this is the opposite example but portrait of a lady on fire Mm. i don't know if either of you've seen that but no but we have to it's one of the french sapphic feats. yes um brilliant film very very good uh very good love story but also there's a a spoiler if people haven't seen it it is a good movie do you not want me to tell you you can tell me okay there's there's the termination of a pregnancy in that movie Mm. um and one of the characters wants to draw it because she's like so taken in by the like the the moment of like it's like a woman giving another woman an abortion and the like the idea of like all of them working together in this way and it's Mm. like it's really interesting rumination on women like caring for one another through something like that yeah you talk about that on true social yeah i did it didn't get the reception that i was expecting for some reason shocking yeah yeah, people are like not into positive sentiments about abortion on Truth Social. I, I don't know why. Weird. Yeah. Crazy. Um, this movie ends with this beautiful I, beautiful. I I hate to say this because I do think this movie is so like fun and knows that it's fun, but for it to end on a sequence in which I was like actively crying, um, in which Meryl Streep sings My Love, My Life, as she watches <laughs> from beyond the grave, she watches like Sophie bring her daughter up and kind of like the next generation of like the family she's a boy it's not a, it's, she doesn't yeah. she has a son she doesn't no, have a daughter it's a boy. It's a boy. i apologize um but like watching her, her become like a, a mother as well and like how donna uh like even though obviously sophie is the one who got all the men back together in her life so she, sophie's kind of the reason that like she has that support system or half of that support system it is still very like sweet to watch like it all kind of coalesce into that one moment. Um, it's very, it's actually very moving. I felt, did you feel that way RJ? Yeah. And, and keeping it to like show canon, a beautiful Catholic moment at the end there mm. of, of just thanking God for the blessings that they've given here. Just thought it was and with your spirit. And with your spirit. And with your spirit. Absolutely. Like an image passing by. Look, happy Mother's Day. Moms are great. Moms are pretty. Moms are great. Moms are pretty cool. When I thought you said, I love that how this movie ended beautifully, I literally thought you were about to talk about the Super, Super Trooper. Trooper. And I was ready to be like, it truly was beautiful. A phantasmagoria. <laughs> uh, did, like... <laughs> did they sing Super Trooper at the end of the first movie as well? Yeah. Okay. I still did like it. Yeah. I did like it. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's what yeah, Molly yeah. wants in a in the end of a movie musical. She wants I, a big number. It's yes. a true finale, a and true I gotta give them it's a true finale. Yeah. So, was Super Trooper a song I want to listen to outside of the context of this movie? No, no. but did this, I enjoy this version the of Super scale? Trooper? 
Yeah, absolutely snaps. Not only is it a finale, but it's also a curtain call. And you know what? Mm -hmm. Slay. Give me a whole show. I thought all the bits were funny. Like all of them, all the men dancing with their younger versions. Obviously the, the hairy one is the funny one because it's such a stark contrast of like the same person, but like at different mm-hmm. times in their lives. It was very fun. Um, all of the scenes that Cher was in were all shot in a studio in England. So, oh, so everything that Cher was in was like separate from like the shooting, the filming in that Croatia. Took place in Croatia. Interesting. Yeah. I also don't understand again what this relationship, the relationship with England in this movie, like why cast Lily James just to do an American accent. What's the deal? Yeah, and it's why does Sophie up a couple times not have any cultural beginning. connection to Greece? I have no idea what the. It's a very yeah. cosmopolitan movie. In That's that it true. Is, it's from any actual. Because Sophie could have been. Sophie could have had like a thick Greek accent. She could be a native, you know. She Greek grew up in Greece. I mean, you think you'd Greek. have some like cultural she connection is, to the place? Yeah, she is. Uh, what is it? She is, she is, uh, a Greek native, but not a yeah. native Greek. Hmm. Mm. I guess. Yeah. So this movie is certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes with a critics rating of only seventy nine percent, which I think might be one of the lowest fresh. certified fresh ratings. But mm. Owen Gleiberman from Variety writes, and then of course there's the walking pop royalty that is Cher. She shows up near the end playing Sophie's grandmother, though she looks more like Lady Gaga's aunt. And if there's any single testament here to the Mamma Mia aesthetic, it's the way that Cher's performance of Fernando is hung on by a story hook so contrived that it actually contributes to the song's passion. The film barely pretends that there's a reason for it to be there. The reason is we want to see Cher sing Fernando. When she does, my, my, how can you resist her? Wow. I want to say also when we were looking at pictures of Cher's outfit that you like pulled up an article at one point that was like, is that Lady Gaga or Cher or whatever? And like, I guess I see why she looks kind of like Lady Gaga, but she just looks like a diva. I feel like, like yeah, did, did Lady Gaga erase our memories of all other pop divas that exist? She doesn't look that much like Lady Gaga. I think this was when Gaga had her, bl- ha, ha, she was in her uh, platinum, platinum blonde, blonde era. era. Yeah. Sure. That's the only reason I think that there gets brought up There are multiple women with blonde hair. I know that's hard for men to come to terms with, but <laughs> that's the reality. I know. What? It's not just one elusive woman that I've been chasing all my life. <laughs> Richard Lawson from Vanity Fair writes, speaking of capable hands, someone may show up toward the end of the film and she is singing a down, and she may sing a downright lovely My Love My Life with Seyfried in a genuine tearjerker of a sequence. And it's it's in those poignant moments that the movie really finds its meaning as a film about the pain of missing someone while celebrating that they were alive at all, that grief and appreciation and fond memory mingling together to aching I have to call my mom effect. It just feels nice right now to watch something so forthcoming with its sentiment, steeped in, the, in both the wistfulness of the past and the boggling impossible immediacy of the present. Mm-hmm. And Leslie Felperin from The Hollywood Reporter says, The pickings are decidedly thinner for Mamma Mia 2.0. There's a reason such as tunes When I Kissed the Teacher, Kisses of Fire, and My Love, My Life didn't become hits on the same scale as the aforementioned tunes. Hint, they're kind of crap. This left the producers and filmmakers behind Here We Go Again with with a particularly tricky challenge if they were to fulfill the mandate of all sequels, offer more of the same, but make it a little different. Given that familiar sing-alongable songs are so integral to the Mamma Mia's brand appeal, the solution they've elected to use here is a compromise, one that patches together a story out of the leftover tunes but intersperses them with exactly the same colossal hits we already know and love from the first go-around. It's a solution both fantastically audacious and profoundly bizarrely lazy. Uh, imagine Rodgers and Hammerstein deciding to do a sequel to South Pacific and just recycling I'm Gonna Wash That Man Right Out of My Hair, Some Enchanted Evening, and There Is Nothing Like a Name, because hey, everyone loves those ones. I find issue with this. Yeah, I was going to say they kind of, that's kind of how a lot of Golden Age songwriters worked. <laughs> yes. yes. They have, <laughs> Roger Zayn and famously have like tropes that they always fell back on because yeah. it worked every single time. Lots I get songs. what they're, I get what she's trying to say. Yeah. I just think they're like, the literal really song again, but a lot yes. of songs are like, but it is the musical and then we reused it or like yeah. it's kind of the same song. We just tweaked it a little bit. So like, yeah. you know, they weren't, they weren't coming up with brand new material every single time, certainly. Right. Also, um, good vocabulary in that one. Wow. There's a lot of a lot of words in that that were yeah, uh, good job, Leslie. Good job, Leslie. On Letterboxd, this is a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Lauren gave it four stars and said Lily James singing the line, I believe in angels, like I sure hope he, she believes in herself. Mm. Sienna gave it four stars and said, How I Met Your Mama Mia, which is a play on 
How I Met Your Mother. Mm -hmm. And Mulaney gave it four stars. John Mulaney wow. gave it four, four stars and said, I think I fell in love with every single person in this movie. I picked these I know, three I reviews saying. because I agreed with them. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Finally, we come to the MVP. My MVP, as I've said before, is Jessica. I don't remember her name. Young Tanya. <laughs> young Tanya. Iconic. RJ? I'll pick Young Bill. I think my loins uh, were watching this <laughs> movie. For you. Mm -hmm. Yes, my loins picked for me. And you know what? Who am I to silence her? So, yeah. Young I'm going to give it to Lily James because oh, I was pleasantly yeah. surprised by her. I love Amanda Seyfried, but she gave the performance that I expected from her based on mm. our previous encounters mm. with Lily James. I wasn't really sure what to expect. And I had a lot of fun watching her. And so I think yeah. this is this is probably the most fun I've ever had watching a Lily James movie. Did you ever watch uh, Mrs. Guernsey's Potato and Peel mm -hmm. Society, whatever? Yep. This movie made me want to watch it and I never got to. But do you think I should? Because I do like Lily James. I like. I think so. I read the book when I was in high school. So okay. I had that like book v movie comparison thing going on. But I thought it was good. Okay. Yeah, Did you see Cinderella? No. She's very good in that. She's too. very good in Cinderella. Okay. It's so. actually in Richard Lawson's expanded review. He talks about how it was like nobody was like everybody was like was this a one-time fluke because cinderella's like a classic and everybody likes it or is she actually good and this is like kind of the first big thing she did after that and they mm. were like oh she is good yeah great. i agree she's good molly what's your closer i had a moment while i was watching this watching Cher in this about how Cher was actually a contemporary of abba and how weird it must be for her to to be in this movie about them Mm -hmm. And so wow. in that vein, I would like us all to pick a pop diva from the 2000s and a rival pop star or group whose jukebox musical they will one day star in mm. or rather make a cameo in. Okay, okay, okay. I would love to see Beyonce cameo in a Rihanna jukebox musical. Ooh, that would be <gasps> fire. Because it would be like, oh, finally yes. we get the collab or whatever you know? yes i like that i like that a lot mm. i mm. you would think i would th thought about this mm. one and i didn't but <laughs> britney mm -hmm. jukebox kesha cameo because mm. they have in common sort of a being done dirty by the industry, the industry. and mm. men and that sort of thing and so i feel like a kesha praying energy brought to like a big moment in a Britney Spears. Uh, I guess they're not really contemporary, only in the sense that like Britney's, the top of Britney's fame was not quite the same as the top of Kesha's, but it would be yeah. more of like a homage to the people who trailblaze before you kind of a yes. situation than like a, but also I guess actually in that vein, also fire to have ex Tina be in a Britney. Oh, that would be amazing. Box. Just to, just to like to even put like, to rest. Put the rest. The, the and, then, and then yeah. also have her sing like, I don't know, sometimes, or like, what would, what would be her Fernando, you know? Oh my gosh. What would, what would be the, what would be the Fernando? Would it be lucky? And then she would be like, I understand what Brittany went through. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It'd be like a lucky, I was thinking sometimes, sometimes I run, sometimes I hide, sometimes I'm scared of you. Okay. Yeah. That would also be good. Um, this is tough. I'm going to mm -hmm. say. Because it's somebody who needs to be a kin and like, it can't just be like general pop. Because like, I would say early, early share, Sunny and share had that kind of like more 70s, like folk, folk kind of like mm. inspired sound. But there was mm -hmm. like a disco element to it. Mm -hmm. um, Very more Carpenters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I think I here's what I think. I think the I think Destiny's Child, mm -hmm. all three, should be in a jukebox musical. Should cameo in a jukebox musical about the Dixie Chicks of the Dixie Chicks songs. Whoa. Whoa, the chicks! Now, funny that I said they have to be in the same kind of genre, but I think what's yeah, the through line there that. didn't do that at <laughs> all. But I do think the through line there is obviously that there are three women, mm. and we and we sure. celebrate that for yeah. for its height. Um, Originally there were five, but at the height of Destinies there were three. Yes, and they would do um, Goodbye Earl. 
Wow. But in like a, the New Girl in Town hairspray, like yeah. Destiny's Child sound. Yeah. But sing Goodbye Earl. Yeah. yeah. Like an R and B pop. Yeah. Like wow. independent woman, but it's wow. Goodbye Earl. Wow, Alternatively, you could also do a, a Destiny's Child movie musical, but it yeah. would be the Dixie Chicks Dixie doing Chicks one of their it. songs. Would be I love also the idea incredible. that Destiny Child are the grandmothers of the Dixie Chicks somehow, though. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. It's exactly the same plot. Yeah, it's actually oh, yeah, it's, it's same plot. Same plot as Mamma Mia. It's Mamma Mia, beat for beat. Yeah, swap the songs. Right, swap songs for chicks. Oh yeah, there's, I'm sure. Sure, we can figure um, it out. Oh, I love. Goodbye I was just Girl. reminded of the Dixie Chicks actually this week because it's been. I think it's exactly 20 years from their like Entertainment Weekly cover where they were all naked with the oh, words wow. on them. 20 years from when they, they they were the original people who were canceled because of mm. their political views. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Huh. Say that on Truth Social. Okay. Truth it. Truth, Truth it, baby. It. Okay. Well, thank you for listening. Thank listeners. you. If here we went again, you know. Here we went. And yeah. there it was. And there well, Hopefully was. they don't make a third one, so I don't have to do this again. But uh Well, I hate to tell you. You know what? <laughs> if I get if I get a sister act three, I'll take a Mamma Mia three as okay. you know That's true. the repercussion you, from you the universe. Are yeah. Allegedly getting a sister act three. So um RJ? What do you want to take us out on today? Mm. We can do super trooper. Okay. So I'll be there when you arrive. This is the Meryl part. The thought of you me alive and when you take me in your arms and hold me tight. I know this doesn't mean so much tonight. Tonight the super trooper needs a time to find me. Do you know the words to the song? No. And Tonight that's... the super trooper lights are gonna find me, but I won't feel super blue ba, like I always do. Cause, Cause somewhere, somewhere in the, the crowd, crowd there's you. Super trooper beams are gonna blind me. me. Bye. Thank you for listening to the best revival of a podcast, Showgaze. You can find us on social media. Adam is at Adam Noecker on Twitter. RJ is at RJ Food Rocks on Instagram. And Molly is at Molly Matiny on Instagram. This episode was edited and mixed by Adam Noecker. This has been an Ampliverse production. You can find our show page and more information at theampliverse.com. If you'd like to send us your own takes on the movie we just watched, reach out to us via email and we might read it aloud on the show. Our email is showgazemoviemusical at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find your podcasts. And as always, rate, review, and subscribe to help others find the show. And now, as always, the show must go on. So stick around to hear what we're going to be watching next episode. One of the reasons I wanted to come here tonight was to discuss our future. Of course. I plan on running for office someday. Warner. I think we should break up. What? Oh. If I'm going to be a senator, I need someone serious. I'm seriously in love with you. I love you. Liar! This is the type of girl that Warner wants to marry. A law student. Going to Harvard is the only way I'm going to get the love of my life back. For my admissions essay, Action. I'm going to tell all of you why I'm going to make an amazing lawyer. I feel comfortable using legal jargon in everyday life. I object. Her list of extracurricular activities is impressive. She was in a Ricky Martin video. Aren't we always looking for diversity? Welcome to Harvard. Don't be scared. Everyone will love you. No? Uh, I'm sorry, are you here to see me? I go here. You got into Harvard Law? What, like it's hard? I got a PhD from Berkeley. MBA from Wharton. I've been deworming orphans in Somalia. Two weeks ago, I saw Cameron Diaz at Fred Siegel, and I talked her out of buying this truly heinous Angora sweater. (laughs) Malibu Barbie lives. I've come to join your study group. Our group is full. Oh, is this like an RSVP thing? No, it's like a smart people thing. I give her two more weeks. What is this? We're betting to see how much longer you're going to last. You're not smart enough, sweetie. I'll show you how valuable Al Woods can be. MGM Pictures presents... Do you have a resume? 
It's pink. And it's scented. I think it gives it a little something extra. A comedy about knowing who you are. You think she just woke up one morning and said, I think I'll go to law school today. And showing what you've got. We're defending Brooke Window. You can buy her exercise tapes on infomercials. Wait! Exercise gives you endorphins. Endorphins make you happy. Happy people just don't shoot their husbands. You're fired. What? I have new representation. Reese Witherspoon. Do you remember when we spent those four amazing hours in the hot tub after winter formal? This is so much better than that. Legally Blonde. Oh, look how cute. There's like a judge in everything. Not for Discovering Voices, Building Worlds, The Ampliverse.